Good morning and welcome to your early morning mobility class. Uh, today, all you'll need is a foam roller. We'll be doing a lot of stretching, a couple of hip openers, as well as general mobility through the low back and shoulders. Uh, if you have any requests, as always, feel free to put them in the chat and then uh, let's get started. It's going to, there we go. Okay, so in a seated position, I'm going to start off some just nice deep breathing. Feet, whatever way you want. So cross leg in, half lotus. Why don't you just rest your palms either on your thighs, on your knees, or on your side. Pull back to the shoulders. So I'm going to go for five seconds in and five seconds out. So starting in three, two, and in five. And three, two, one. And then exhale in five. Three, two. One, breathing in, five. And breathing out, five. Let's go for three more. So breathing in, five. And breathing out. And two more, breathing in, five. And breathing out, four, three, two, one. One more time, breathing in, five. And breathing out. Okay, from here, we're actually gonna sit. If, if you can't continue sitting as you are, or if you're able to go to a half lotus, feel free to do so. From here, if you're in half lotus, Whichever leg is on the bottom, we're gonna lean away from that side. If you're sitting cross-legged, just make sure that that leg is closest to you. Uh, if you can't sit cross-legged at all, uh, just do your best to sit in whatever position is comfortable. But for me, I'm gonna go into half lotus. I'm gonna anchor my, uh, my knee that's the furthest down. And from here, I'm gonna lift my body up and away. And as I lean away, I wanna to try to re-anchor my hip back into the ground. So I'm trying to separate my rib. From my hip. So for me, my left knee is down, my left hip is anchored to the ground, my left arm is going up, and I'm pushing through my spine and reaching away as much as I can. And the goal here is to feel a little bit in the QL. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, just in the side of your in the side of your body, underneath your ribs, and above your hip. We're gonna hold this one for about 10 more seconds. Three, two, one, and slowly easing off. We're gonna switch our legs. So here, I know my right side is down, my left side is up. As I lean to my right, my right arm comes up, and my right hip tries to anchor down to the floor as much as I possibly can. I want to breathe through our stomach the whole time. In general, the whole class tries to see if you can breathe a couple seconds in, a couple seconds in. And five, four, three, two, one. And let's do a couple of groin and hip openers. So here, we're in a seated position. We're just going to put our feet together. Start off with a nice, simple groin stretch. Just feet together, grabbing those feet and pulling ourselves in. The key part here is try not to hunch over, try not to arch your back. Try to stay lean forward with a little bit of a taller posture so that your low back stays relatively neutral. But if you can't, that's OK. Lean forward the best you can. We'll be here for about 20 seconds. And during any stretch today, uh, try to see if you can use your breath to assist you in the stretch. As you exhale, try to go maybe just a touch further, whatever stretch we're doing today. And five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. From here, we're going to go to a knee position, sorry, a lunge position. From here, let's, we're going to go for a hip flexor, hamstring, and glute stretch. That's a personal little series that I like. Whichever leg is in front for me, it's my left leg. This knee's going to turn a little bit towards the outside, so I'm going to push this knee out. My right glute's going to turn on a bit. 
from here, I'm gonna to try to squeeze both glutes as much as I can, tuck in my tailbone, and lean forward so that I feel a stretch in my in my right leg, in my uh, the front of my thigh, on top of my hip, and my right side. So my left leg is in front, it's turned open. I'm gonna squeeze my bum, I'm gonna reach forward, so I feel a nice stretch in the hip flexor, and a little bit in the top of the thigh. And of course, if any requests today, of things you wanna do, let me know. I'm more than happy to add them into the routine. Maybe here for about 15 seconds, just really sinking in. Like always, try to focus on a couple seconds in, a couple seconds out for your slow breathing. And three, two, one, now for a hamstring stretch. So same leg still in front, we're gonna take that heel in, we're trying to bring our toes towards us, and lean forward to feel a nice stretch in the hamstring. Now slowly sink in. You want to stretch and squeeze back your shoulders and really dig right into your hamstring. And slow deep breaths the whole time. About 10 more seconds here, and slow deep breaths. And five, four, three, two, one. Now taking the same leg, we're gonna put it parallel to the edge of our mat if we have one. If not, just as horizontal as we can. And then from here, when I sink our hips down and back, so we feel a stretch in our glute of whichever leg is in front. Then my left side is in front, I make sure I sink my hips back. Uh, the alternative is if you're having enough time, you can also flip over and just hug that same leg into your chest just to go for a nice and easy good stretch. Other one is a-okay. Okay, slow deep breaths here. About 10 more seconds, 10. Now. And five, four, three, two, and one. Easing off. Now you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So lunge position. I want you to plant that leg. Whichever leg is in the front, rotate it open. Trying to push that knee out. We're going to tuck in our tailbone. Keep our core engaged. We're going to lean forward to feel a stretch in the back leg, in the top of the thigh, in front of the hip flexor. And if you have any requests, feel free to make them in chat. I'll make sure we get to them. And any body part you want to mobilize or any particular thing you want to work on today. Feel free to put it in the chat. 15 more seconds. We're really going to sink into this one, especially if we have a lot of settings to do today. Definitely going to open up our hips, our groins, and our glutes as much as we can. And three. Two and one. Here, leg out straight, shoulders back, leaning forwards for a nice, easy hamstring stretch. If you want, you can also try to point your toes towards your face. This is deepen the stretch a little bit and ease off the knee. And slow deep breaths. Few more seconds, it's really trying to sink in and really feel the tension all along the hamstring. Ideally, not in the knee, I'm going to feel behind the hamstring. So, you're behind the thigh, it's the hamstring. And four, three, two, and one. Now, bring that same leg parallel to the edge of our mat. If you have a mat, if not, just as parallel as you can. And then, we're sort of perpendicular to your body. And here, you're going to stick your hips down and back. We're going to breathe through your stomach the whole time. And with every exhale, see if you can just deepen the stretch just that little more. And five, four. Three, two, and one. Perfect. We're going to do two more growing ones. 
And then we'll switch over to the roller. So here, you can do this standing or in a, in a low squat position. So I'm going to show you standing in a low squat. So take a wide stance from here. We're going to shift your weight as if we're doing a side lunge. We're going to lift the other, whichever leg is straight, we're going to lift that heel up. We're going to try to turn our body away and sink into a deeper squat. This is a little stretch on the inside of the hamstring and a little bit of the groin. Now, if you want a bit of a deeper stretch, you can take this right to the floor. My toe up, my heel is planted, and I'm going to actually rotate both this knee and my body away from that leg. All I'm doing is putting this just this leg in a more extreme position. Do the best you can. You can do it standing, you can do it squatting like this. Whatever works for you, you want to feel tension all on the inner thigh and the inner hamstring. And of course, try to keep that toe plane up as best you can. So five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. They're coming up, switching sides. So again, you can do standing like this, make sure that heel is up, or you can go and come right down to the floor. And you know, the key part is rotating away. You want to turn your body and your other leg away from the anchor foot. That's very key. She goes up on the inside of the hamstring. The hamstring actually has four parts. So we're going to feel it on the inner two. You're going to feel the inner hamstring and the groin. About 20 more seconds here. We're just going to just breathe. Any stretch we do. After that, we'll hit the foam roller. We'll release our glutes again, our quads, all that good stuff. And of course, when you request, we're going to put them in the chat anytime. And five, four, three, two, and one. So, a quick check. check. See if anybody any requests. None, that's okay. We're going to hit the foam rollers. We're going to start lying face up. I'm actually going to do this without the mat. We're going to start lying face up with our head, tail going, and shoulders on the, on the roller. From here, we're going to start with a nice easy chest stretch. Then we'll go to a passive groin stretch. So here, head, tail going, and shoulders aligned. Palms face up. And from here, keeping our shoulders low, we're going to try to see if we can just make some snow angels. Then we're uh, a ways away from snow. But uh, we're going to go over some snow angels just to the upper body. Think slow, big motions. And the goal here is to feel a nice, gentle stretch across the chest and shoulders. In order to breathe through your stomach the whole time, try to avoid any sudden, quick movements. Try to really take your time and slowly sink in. And if you find a particularly rough spot, if you want to just let your hands kind of hang there, that's fine too. Again, listen to your body, make sure. And you're not pushing yourself in any funny directions. And then you're kind of honoring whatever stretch you're in. We're going to be here for about 20 more seconds. Three, two, one. Then here we're just going to add another passive groin stretch. Just one more before we move on to the, the foam rolling. So palms face up, but resting on the floor. Feet together, let your knees fall to the side, and just go for a nice, easy groin stretch. Here, we're just going to breathe into this one for the next 25 or so seconds. Sometimes it's nice and good to add a nice passive opening. Just let us also breathe into it. And five, four, three, two, and one. We're going to come off the roller in the back, and now we're going to flip over and go into our thighs. We're going to start off just above the knee.
We're taking a roller starting just from the knee, we're going to dig into our quads. We have a few options here. We can start with our feet turned out, we can do our feet turned in, or we can keep our feet neutral. Either one's fine. Our goal is just to slowly work through any kind of tension in our quads. You're going to work more of the outer thigh, turn your feet inwards. You're going to work a little bit more of the inner thigh, turn your feet outwards. we are here for about a minute and a half to quite a while. So really make sure you're digging into whatever knots or any kind of tension you have. If you want, you can also do one leg at a time. All you gotta do is simply cross one leg over the other. For me, uh, this is enough, so I'm gonna stick to, to two on top. But if you wanna do just one at a time, you absolutely can. About a minute here, really taking our time. The goal here is not to go quickly, and the goal here isn't to try to push through pain. The goal is to just slowly work through any kind of tension and breathe through it as best you can. Being slow, deliberate work. Excellent. About 30 seconds. Just really taking your time. Slowly digging. So 20 more to go. Five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. If you're actually going to our shins, here I want you to go place the roller just below your knees. We're going to cross our legs, uh, uh, cross your shins. Then whichever leg is on the bottom, we're going to lean our hips towards that side and work the front of our shin. So for me, my right leg is on the bottom, my left leg is on top. I'm going to lean towards my right and work right along my shin. I'll show you from the front. So here, my right leg is on the bottom, my left leg is going to be on top. And from here, I lead my body towards the right, but it goes to work all on the front of my shin. So what I'm trying to target is the outer third of my shin. This muscle is the muscle that actually helps lift your foot towards your knee. So you keep going on this one for 20 more seconds. Uh, you don't have to go back and forth all the way. You can just do it kind of section, one section at a time. But definitely avoid curling your toes or trying to squeeze your feet in any way. You can also keep your feet relaxed as you work through all those shin muscles. In 10 seconds, 10, nine, and five, four, three, two, and one. Switching sides. You're doing a lot of walking these days, especially uphill or downhill. It's good to work on all those little posture muscles. So, other side. About 25 seconds here. And four, three, two. Now we're going to do the other side. We're going to go for our calves. So you're going to flip over. For me, I'm going to do one calf at a time, but you can do both. So either both calves on top and working back and forth. Pay attention on our calves. Just make sure not to cross the knee joint. You don't, want to be, you don't want to be behind the knee. You want to focus on just the calf muscle. For me, I'm going to do one calf at a time. I'm just going to focus on using the top of my leg to press down on the other because that's enough for me. I have pretty tight calves. So this is enough, but if you wanted, you can also lift yourself up and do one calf at a time and really dig in there. 
Uh, for me, just the one leg uh, is enough. So we're gonna do each side for about 45 seconds. If you wanna do both for the full minute and a half, you absolutely can. And after this, we're gonna go back to some static stretching or some, uh, just a bit more uh, mobility work before the upper body. If you have any requests, definitely let me know. More than happy to, to adjust. So 10 more seconds on one side if you're doing one side, and if we're doing uh, both, keep doing both. And four, three, two, and one. Other side. So again, for me, uh, it's enough just to do one side at a time with just a gentle pressure on top. But if you want to do both the whole time, keep doing both. We're going to be here for another 40 or so seconds. With 20 more to go. Slow deep breaths. And five, four, three, two, and one. Just gonna double check on some feedback. Feedback on bites. All right. Sounds good. So we're going to change course a little bit. I set up her body. We're actually going to go right to her feet. Uh, if you can, grab a, either a hockey ball, a cross ball, golf ball, whatever you got lying around. I have to go grab the lacrosse ball, so I'll be right back. So, uh, if you need a lacrosse ball or if you have a peanut roller like this, this is fine too. So, for our feet, I'm actually going to bring this down so you can see. So, to do our feet properly, you can use a peanut or a ball. We're going to start underneath our big toe, so our big toe. We're going to press on as firmly as we can, and we're going to go roll with our foot on a slight angle. Working back and forth like this. I'm gonna show you from the side. So like this, our goal is to work back and forth with this edge of the foot actually turned up. So again, my foot is here. My toes are turned up like this. I'm not neutral, I'm actually up. I also slowly work back and forth right along there. If you want to press and hold in a particular spot, that's fine too. I'm going to be here for about 20 more seconds. I'm going to switch to the middle of the foot. Now we're going to use a ball, a peanut, like I have, a cross ball, hockey ball, whatever works. And five, four, three, to, now we're going to put our foot in a neutral stance. So here, neutral, between the balls of our feet. I want you to press as firmly as you can and roll right along the middle. So goal is to actually tuck. So now we're going to go right along the middle of the foot. I think I'm going to try to press as firmly as you can. My foot is neutral, the ball is pressing right along the center line of my foot. I'm going to press as firmly as you can. 
press and hold. In three, two, one, switching sides. So now big toe on the other side. Press as firmly as we can. We're slowly gonna work right along the arch. So again, my toe is actually turned up, so my foot isn't neutral. My foot is actually turned up. Or I should say my pinky toes are up and my big toes are pointed down. We're gonna work right along the arch. If you wanna press and hold it in a particularly rough spot, that's fine too. About 10 more seconds, 10. All right, and now in the middle, so plant your heel presses for me as you can, really try to squish it right down, really compress it, and then work right along the center of your foot. The goal here is to try to firmly press. So even if you reach your feet, try to press your heel down. Imagine trying to also get gum off your shoe, trying to really press down and through. And slow, deep breaths. And three, two, and one. Perfect, from here, I'm actually gonna, sorry, we're gonna take that peanut, we're gonna go for a little bit of neck, shoulders, and rumbles. So here, we change a little bit because of requests, which is always good. So here, I want you to start off with our upper trap. So taking our, either just the ball or the peanut, either one's fine, we're gonna take one half of the peanut, we're going to place it underneath our upper trap. And from here, our goal is to take that side and just slowly wave the arm up and down. Think slow, easy, gentle movements. Really taking our time just to mobilize. You can also go sideways. You can draw circles or half moons. You can kind of make crescent shapes. You can flow up and down. Whatever arm movement works for you. Again, drawing small circles, big circles, or spirals, whatever, whatever works. Just think slow, deep movement. So loose and releasing for the traps, shoulders, and rotator cuff. And we'll do have some static stretching for those same muscles. Slowly working through. We're going to be here for about 15 more seconds. Just slowly trying to mobilize and open up our range of motion. Three, two, and one. Other side. So same thing here, place it underneath your upper trap or behind your collarbone, and slow, gentle movements up and down right along here. After this, we'll do rotator cuff and the rhomboids. And we'll stretch those. And 
Put 10 more seconds here, 10, nine, three, two, and one. Here we go for a rotator cuff. So I want you to find uh, kind of the nook of your, the back of your shoulder. If you're not sure where that is, take your elbow, place it to the ground. Take your hands, dig behind your actual, like the, the, the front of your shoulder, reach behind to feel the groove. If you're not sure where that groove is, follow along your arm until your arm, you feel like your arm ends and your back begins. So right in that little uh, transition area. We're gonna place a ball or a peanut, I don't know it's fine, I'm gonna use half my peanut. We're gonna bring that elbow down, we're gonna rotate as best as we can, right along that shoulder just to open up both our posture and our rotator. Try to just slowly rotate through. Try to keep this elbow anchored down. Or try not to actually move it a whole lot. Try to keep it in one spot. Then as you rotate, avoid that arm extending out. What we don't want to do our goal is to kind of flip flop back and forth. Our goal is to keep our arm bent to 90, focus on the rotation. If you can touch the floor, great. If you can't, don't force it. And 10 more seconds, 10. Now you should really rotate through that joint as much as we can. And five, four, three, two, and swing sides. So I'm actually gonna turn around here. But other side, having that elbow out behind that shoulder. And you may notice one side might be quite a bit worse or a lot more restricted than the other. And that's okay. Like for me, my left side is actually quite a bit more restricted. But our goal is just to rotate as much as we can, keep that elbow in the same place, just rotating. Try to really open up. Think slow and deliberate movements. And three, two, and one. Here we're gonna go for a rhomboid. So we're gonna place either the ball or the peanut, either one's fine. I'm gonna show you where to place it. So from here, I want you to place it right just between your spine and your shoulder blade. So right about here. And we're gonna lie face up. We're gonna hug ourselves as much as we can just to expose all those back muscles. Then we're gonna dig into there and roll either back and forth or up and down, either one's fine. This one can also be done against a wall. All you have to do is just place it in the same spot and squat up and down. So you can do this either on the floor or against the wall. Either one is A-OK. -okay. I'll be doing it from the floor, but you can kind of choose wherever you want to do it. And for me, it's enough just to sit here and just to kind of slowly move back and forth a little bit. But if you want to move up and down, feel free to be as aggressive or as intense as you want. I'm going to be here for about 40 seconds, 40 more seconds. About a minute total on each side. Good, about fifteen seconds, one five. Three, two, and one, switching sides. So here, behind the shoulder blade, in between the spine and the shoulder blade, we're gonna hug yourself as much as you possibly can, really bring those arms over. We're gonna expose as much back muscle as you can, and really dig into those postural muscles just behind the shoulder blade.
So 10 more seconds, 10, really digging in nine, eight, seven, five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. Here we're just going to go for some neck and shoulder stretches. So what we can do from the floor, we're going to plant our, we're going to plant our palm down, we're going to drop our shoulder. We're going to turn away as much as we can, feel a nice stretch in the bicep and in the shoulder. Just opening up through here. I want to even turn your head away a little bit, sneak in an neck stretch it out so we can. We're just going to open up through the shoulder and through the bicep. You can also do this against a wall, that's fine. If you want. Also place your hand against the wall and sink down to go for that same bicep and shoulder stretch. Other ones are okay. I'm going to be down here though. Go 10 more seconds, 10. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Other side. Shoulders back, pushing through. If you want to use a wall, you absolutely can. So you wall or floor, either one's fine. There's no, there is no right way to do it. Put 10 more seconds here. And three, two, and one. Perfect. Here actually a stretch out of wrists and forearms. This is an important one, especially if you do a lot of typing. So we're going to put our palms together, drop our shoulders, and imagine kind of pressing your palms down while your elbows come up. And for a nice, easy stretch along the bottom of our forearms. Now, if this is too easy for you, if you find you have trouble, uh, there's a much more aggressive option, which I will show. You can also turn your palms backwards on the floor and then really lean back and really open up through here. That's a more aggressive option. Uh, if you want to go for the gentler option, you just kind of clap your hands. And push your and push your wrist in. But again, more intense option is your fingertips are actually towards your knees, your wrists are forward, and you actually to lean your body back and use your hips as leverage and really get into your into the into your forearms. So again, if that's too aggressive, clapping and pushing down is a-okay. But everyone works for you. But the goal is to feel it along here. About five more seconds. Five, four, three. Two. Now do the opposite. So now the back of our palms together. We're going to try to bring our wrists up and our elbows down and feel a nice stretch on the top of the forearms. Uh, this one, it's not good to try to do the aggressive version. Uh, if you want to try to just get deeper stretch, you can just focus on one at a time and just simply pull the wrist down, feel a nice stretch on the top of your form. So either back of our palms together and pressing our elbows down or one at a time is a okay. Whichever one you want. So here about 10 more seconds, 10, nine, and five, four, three, two. One of some nice easy neck stretches, just we're gonna go side, side, and then up. So one arm, one arm behind our back. My left arm is behind my back, my head's gonna to tilt to the right. I'm gonna to try to draw my left shoulder. We're gonna go for these nice, easy neck stretches. Always good to do, especially if you plan on being on the computer today. So I was gonna just release through these muscles. About 15 seconds and I'll switch sides. And five, four, three, two, and one on the other side. So my left, my right hand is towards my left. My head goes towards my left as well. About 10 more seconds here. Three, two, 
One last one, both hands behind our back, drop our shoulders, put our chin to the sky. Uh, if you want, feel free to even add like a chewing motion uh, just to help stretch out uh, the front of our neck, especially if we're doing a lot of texting, a lot of kind of chin to chest, and we're not even noticing. We want to do the opposite. We want to bring our chin up, drop our shoulders. If you want to add a chewing motion, <laughs> almost like it's like a talking motion, feel free to do that to you gotta find wherever you need to stretch. Ten seconds here, ten. And three, two, and one. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording here, but thank you all who attended live and thank you everyone who watches these later on YouTube.